This is Access Door County, and I am your host, Victoria Sarenich. Today we will learn about cultivating a water ethic, and our guest is Jim Kettler, a Cleveland, Wisconsin resident and executive director of the Lakeshore Natural Resource Partnership. Welcome, Jim. Thanks, Victoria. We're really glad that you could be here. Is it okay if I use LNRP to refer to your organization? Absolutely. So let's start with a little background in the history of the LNRP. How did it get started? We were formed in 2003 as a nonprofit. We came out of the basin partnership groups that were throughout the state. Uh, and a group of folks, uh, when those dissolved, decided to form LNRP. What's a basin partnership? So the basin partnership came out of the DNR. Uh, where they formed groups around different watershed basins. And uh, throughout the 90s and early 2000s, those basin partnerships uh, focused on issues around water resources and watershed management. So what is the basin that Door County is in? So we're in the Lakeshore Basin. Uh, the Lakeshore Basin is defined by the Niagara Escarpment. And so literally all the waters that flow east off of the escarpment into Lake Michigan and the Bay of Green Bay are part of our basin. That includes Dark County, Kiwani County, Manawak County, and the eastern portions of Calumet and Brown Counties. So you're working with all of these counties, the residents and the community organizations in all of these counties for education and cultivating a water ethic. Correct. So what's the, what is the mission and the vision here? The mission is very simple. It's cultivating environmental stewardship in the Lakeshore region. And our vision really tries to look at stewardship as a way of operating uh, and cultivating that water ethic. And I can read it or I can just kind of paraphrase, but we look at an environmental stewardship ethic that encourages cooperative planning and management of natural resources by communities, organizations, and individuals to actively enhance ecosystem goods and services and facilitate their recovery and long-term health. That's a, that's a mouthful it there, sure Jim. Is, I know. And so the most important thing I think for right now is stewardship. Mm -hmm. Stewardship means what to us? Really caring for our air, land, and water for both our current generations and future generations. It, it's the caretaker, but it takes it into the future. Correct. Okay. So leaving it literally better than we found it. Which is perfect. Wouldn't mm -hmm. we want to do that for right. our grandchildren? So now there's a specific focus and it's cultivating a water ethic mm -hmm. and this is part of the stewardship correct. so it's to teach people about protecting their water That's what correct. how would you explain it and so really it's about taking care of the waters in your backyard uh, we have a model in Manitowoc county in fact where we literally have a friends group for every significant body of water in the county so we have friends of the twin rivers we have friends of the Manitowoc river watershed we have friends of the Branch River Watershed, friends of Hika Bay, and the Little Manitowoc River Partnership. So each of these groups focuses on a body of water, uh, whether it be invasive species, whether it be monitoring water quality. Uh, we're launching a Project RED, which is uh, riverine early detection, which allows citizens to basically look for problems, recognize those problems, and either call the DNR or the County Land and Water Conservation Department or LNRP and, and basically give us a heads up on what they, they find. So this model in Manitowoc County could be replicated in the other counties and these are volunteers, people that are uh, members of your organization or? Correct. They're all volunteers and yes, we do want to replicate that model. We want to build this model. We've really just began to really put and devote resources to that model in the last couple of years and we really want to make sure that we can sustain this model before moving elsewhere into the other counties in our region. Uh, but so far we've had great success. And for our viewers, we will have a, a, the image of the Manitowoc model for their different uh, water Watersheds. Watersheds. Mm -hmm. We'll have that up on the screen during our program so that people can take a look at it. But what are the important elements of a water ethic? Well, the first is recognizing that water is life. Without water, we don't exist. Often when I introduce myself at conferences or workshops, I, I introduce myself as 80% water. Jim Kettler, I'm 80% water. Uh, I think that just brings home that message that we're part of the water cycle and an integral part of the water cycle. Everything we do has an impact on the water cycle. 
And so I think recognizing that water is life is absolutely the first step in cultivating a water ethic. And then the extent of the water resources on our lakeshore, what, what is... We are flush with water resources, but unfortunately those water resources are at risk. Uh, we have a stewardship investment fund where we provide small grants to community organizations and we have funded in the last couple of years both the Kiwani Groundwater Guardians and the Calumet Groundwater Guardians uh, to do and subsidize well testing. We're finding 40 to 60 percent of the wells we're testing are above EPA standards for E. coli and nitrates. So and that's is, pretty scary. Okay, but this is something that once people are aware of, then they can be more vigilant about uh, protection for themselves and protection for the groundwater. Uh, but we are, I see in some of the literature, we are part of the water cycle. Can you explain the water cycle to me? Sure, you'll have a, a schematic uh, for the viewers in, in your program. Uh, but the water cycle basically looks at all aspects of how water moves through the landscape, uh, whether it's evaporation uh, from our lakes and waters, uh, whether it's transpiration out of our trees and vegetation, uh, precipitation, the various forms of precipitation, and how everything basically is connected by water. Okay, so it connects everything and how healthy we are is a measure of how well we take care of our water or? That's absolutely correct. Uh, you know, really, the, our practices on the land are reflected in our waters. And so really, uh, to look at the health of our waters is really a very, as Luna Leopold says, the principal measure of how we do things on the land. And what have, recently, what has LNRP uh, been involved in? I understand you had a retreat? Yeah, we just actually had our uh, annual board member retreat on Saturday. Uh, but one of the bigger projects, we were very integral in uh, helping restore Centerville Creek. Uh, a dam was removed in 1996, and the village of Cleveland really had no plans for that abandoned mill pond. Um, they got a cost estimate from the Corps of Engineers that was upwards of a million dollars with a 50% match, and the village just was not going to come up. Just did not have half exactly. a million dollars, exactly. no. Exactly. And so they contracted with LNRP. Uh, we formed a community, a community advisory committee, and we were able to basically put a, a series of proposals and fundraising initiatives together uh, where we raised about $400,000. And now we have a meandering stream, uh, a cedar swamp. We planted about 800 trees this pa uh, past year. Uh, we have a coastal management grant that's actually going to uh, construct a pedestrian bridge from the south side of the park to the north side of the park. Uh, the village board approved increasing the park size from just 2.2 acres to almost 14 acres. So the park has now increased almost six times. Uh, so that's been a major project that we've been involved so with. So it's a in major benefit for that that community. It's and, an incredible community resource. And yeah. LNRP doesn't dig the ground, but you work on creating the proposals so that people can get an idea of the scope of the work. That's correct. And we the cost of the work. You mm -hmm. And you help uh, them evaluate proposals? Or? Correct. Absolutely. And, and so you, you mentioned that you help raise money. What are some of the LNRP uh, ways that they do that? We do a lot of grant writing. Um, we have federal grants, state grants. Uh, we apply to private foundations. Uh, we look for corporate sponsorship. And then we have a couple of fundraiser events every year. Now, I've heard you have a really popular fundraiser event in the fall. Correct. It's our Chautauqua Barn Dance. We've ran that for five years. Uh, we bring a, a noteworthy speaker under the tent, the Chautauqua, and we have a kind of a community engagement in the afternoon. And then that evening, we uh, were hosted by the Saxon Homestead in Cleveland. They the Saxon Farm. Correct. Correct. And they converted a barn to really a community center. Uh, we get a band, we uh, source all of our food locally and have a wonderful buffet. In fact, this year, the LTC Culinary Institute uh, prepared and presented the, the buffet. That was in 2013. When did you have it in 2013? We started in September. It's usually the third Saturday in September. Mm -hmm. And um, this year we 
brought Pat Leavenworth, who was the NRCS, which is the National Resource Conservation Service, uh, the state conservationist for 18 mm -hmm. years. And she talked about water in agriculture and what best management practices we can apply to agriculture to improve our water quality. Well, there, I'm sure there's always something to be learned for everyone. And you have a We All Live on the Water campaign. Correct. For, is this new for 2014? No, in fact, we started this campaign in 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, but we revisited it last, uh, in 2012 really. Uh, and our board decided to make the We All Live on the Water campaign the underlying theme of everything we do. And so we've got a sign, actually a billboard sign on Highway S, uh, just south of the Door County border. Uh, we have a number of these signs which community groups uh, support. It's the We All Live on the Water campaign mm -hmm. uh, with the DNR environmental uh, tip line. And so then we put the logo of the organization and LNRP on the bottom. Uh, there are some businesses that have sponsored these signs. And so these signs are on uh, boat landings, uh, trailheads, places that have a public interface. So there are signs that if an organization or a business would like to display it, they would contact you and you would make arrangements for the purchase and the installation of such a sign. Yeah, that's correct. And when they contact you, and we'll put the information there is uh, on the screen for the viewers, do you, uh, you have a website? Correct. And you have a, a phone number where people Absolutely. can leave a message mm -hmm. and an email. Correct. All so there. all of those are available for people to contact you to get more information about LNRP and la our uh, We All Live on the Water campaign. That's so, correct. Well, do you have an action plan, though, for 2014? We do. And, in fact, our board every year, and that's part of our annual retreat, uh, kind of reviews our action plan and then formally approves it. Uh, this year we have three projects that we're working on. One is finishing up that Centerville Creek and Hika Park restoration. Mm -hmm. We're about 90% finished there. Uh, another major project that we're now launching is on the Little Manitowoc River in uh, southern Manitowoc County, uh, just actually in downtown Manitowoc between Manitowoc and Two Rivers. A flood in 2008 uh, basically blew out uh, what had been uh, some open water and created mud flats, and those mud flats then got invaded by Phragmites and reed canary grass, and so we're looking to restore about a 38-acre coastal wetland. Okay, now you you, you said a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You said it, a <laughs> flood blew out the stream, and then you talk coastal. So I'm thinking it's connected to Lake Michigan. It so is. so give me a little. When you say blew out, what do you mean? You, so. There was a major rain event in two, June of 2008. So a downpour. A very big downpour. Okay. And what happened was a flood then came rushing down the river, and what had been open water and kind of a, a physical berm. Uh, so they right had banks the, on either side of the, right. of the river. Okay. And right at the shoreline of Lake Michigan. That blew out, and what resulted were basically mud flats. So just the river just spread all over the place and became and a big drained puddle into and, Lake Michigan. And everything went into the lake. Okay, Correct. the mud, the, the all, and all the native plants, the plants that were holding the soil together, are gone. Correct. Okay, and so, so then, then what are you going to do? And so then, Phragmites, which is a major invasive species in northeast Wisconsin, and reed canary grass, uh, kind of invaded those mud flats, and that became then really a biological desert. So, so then the river was never able to go back to being a river. It Correct. just was kind of a, a really nasty, muddy puddle. And with Phragmites, we know it was smelly. Correct. And so we're looking then to literally create with that coastal wetland restoration, uh, the Lincoln Park Conservancy. And that will be basically uh, including Indian Creek Park, the Lincoln Park Zoo, the Little Manor Walk walkway uh, under one management regime. So, well, that sounds like a, a lot to take on. So we had a mm -hmm. river that just flattened itself out. Correct. And then you've got three projects related to restoring that river. Does the river connect those three? All three are on that river, correct. Okay. And mm -hmm. so what is the what have you done so far for that project? This so we've, is mm -hmm. And this is number two of your three things. Correct. Okay. Uh, so we basically have gotten... Uh, our stewardship investment fund uh, contributed $5,000 to do a habitat survey of the entire area. We got a, a DNR rapid response grant for Phragmites, and so we had one year of treatment this past fall. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a three-year grant. 
and we are searching for additional dollars from a number of organizations to basically then uh, complete the overall restoration. So with those different community groups and organizations, you've outlined what's necessary and you've got some uh, like requests for proposal parameters so that you can get information on how much money you need. Yes, we'll get an engineering design and that engineering design will dictate the dollars we'll need. Okay. And that's kind of our next step is getting uh, kind of bid ready engineering designs. Okay, so you're finishing the creek. You're working on the, uh, the Little Manitowoc Conservancy. Conservancy. I have to take notes here. Uh -huh. And your third effort this year? Is really looking at creating a climate resilient watershed and looking at flood mitigation as the outcome of our effort. All right, let's take them, let's parse that out. Yeah. Climate resilient watershed. Exactly, and these are watersheds that are basically resilient and resistant to climate change. And, that means increasing storm intensity, uh, rainfall patterns, you name it. And uh, we're modeling our efforts after what the Milwaukee River uh, watershed folks are doing. Uh, it's a group called Sweetwater. They're looking at investing upstream and not spending as much on the infrastructure in the city. So they're starting where the problem starts, Correct. so to speak. Okay. And so our project is looking at the Baird Creek watershed in Brown County Baird Creek flows into the East River. The East River flows into the Lower Fox. The Lower Fox, Fox. has great flood risk. Okay. If we would have a major flood event on the Lower Fox, the city of Green Bay has high risk in terms of flooding. So those are all going towards the bay because they're mm -hmm. all part of the basin and the basin correct. is everything that goes towards the bay or the lake. That's correct. So, you're, uh, so we're looking at implementing best management practices upstream by restoring wetlands, restoring riparian areas, creating buffers around those riparian areas, uh, all with the intent of reducing flood potential. Well, how do you inform people? I know our program will help inform people, but how do you inform people in that area? Yeah, it's a lot of, of education and outreach. I do a lot of presentations to town boards and then working with farmers and working with other community groups. Uh, it's a slow and long process though. Uh, we use you know, patience and perseverance is our, our kind of operating uh, model. Okay. So the second half of that third one was a flood management program. What is... Correct. And so we're working then with the Brown County and the City of Green Bay uh, as they begin to build uh, climate uh, kind of programming into their planning structures. We are looking at Baird Creek as a model that other communities and other watersheds can use to reduce the flood downstream, the flood potential. Okay, so in the Lake Michigan basin, we have how many watersheds do you have? We actually have 20 watersheds. Okay, and Door County is one watershed or? Door is one because of all the small kind of frontal watersheds, what we call frontal watersheds. Mm -hmm. Frontal means they just are small watersheds that flow directly into Lake Michigan. So there's potential for some uh, assistance or some education in the Door County area to help with uh, flood events or management of the Phragmites if we have a river that floods and then it, it loses its banks and, and needs to be Absolutely. Uh, addressed. Uh, we work very closely with the Door County uh, Land and Water Conservation Department on Phragmites control. Mm -hmm. In fact, have funded some of their work. Uh, That's been pretty seed months. successful They're here from successful what I understand. Uh, they've had uh, very little uh, return of the Phragmites in Correct. some of those areas. No, they've had a major treatment program and a very successful one. Have you, uh, I see you've got a plaque here, and you yep. that's for some of the work that the LNRP has been doing? Exactly. This uh, is, we actually won, and I'll hold up the plaque in just a second. Um, we won the Wisconsin IDEA Award, and it's for community groups that work with the UW system and promoting the quality of life. We've had interns out of UW Manitowoc uh, working with LNRP and sampling five different watersheds in southern Manitowoc County. Centerville Creek, Fisher Creek, Point Creek, Pine Creek, and Calvin Creek. Uh, last year we had 5,000 data points. Uh, we present that data then to the public. But what came out of this is a very interesting initiative for LNRP. We are cooperating with UW Manitowoc to launch the Lakeshore Water Institute. Uh, what is that? Now the Water Institute will be uh, housed at UW Manitowoc. Uh, but what it'll do is basically 
uh, monitor water quality, but through that monitoring, hopefully provide the information to decision makers that's necessary to make sound decisions on land management practices. So they've got a, the decision makers, and these would be your town government people or your village or your county. The, yeah, they, this is to provide them with some more science-based information. Good data. Because mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to make these decisions when you're, you just look outside at the weather. That's exactly right. That's, it's not the only way to make a decision. So if you and So yeah, that, this is the uh, Wisconsin Idea Award plaque. It's offered by the UW Chancellor. Ray Cross uh, presented it to us uh, in September of 2012. And so that was a major feather in our hat, and we've been able to leverage that award into additional funding and then launching this Lakeshore Water Institute. So there's only one of those awards made each year? Correct. Well, that's congratulations Thank on you. that. Mm -hmm. So if people would like to know more about how to cultivate a water ethic or what a water basin is or the watershed, uh, you're available. I'm available, and our website's very informative. Okay. Uh, they can go to our website, and all that contact information will be available for your viewers. And you would make presentations. You have a PowerPoint, I understand. I have multiple PowerPoints on so both water ethic, groundwater, a number of topics. And you've presented up here in Door County before. We, mm -hmm. You've been at what venues? Uh, we just presented to the League of Women Voters back in... Uh, late 2013 uh, we presented to the and that door was property at crossroads owners. right correct uh, the door property owners uh, we also host a sustainable living fair in uh, april of every year and we're building a, a team this year that includes door property owners sustained door the door county environmental council uh, the climate coalition of door county uh, and the door peninsula uh, astronomical society Terrific. And where and is the Clean that? Water Action Council. Let me and the Clean Water <laughs> and where yeah. is that uh, Clean Water Action Council? Okay. Right. And where is that uh, Sustainable Living Fair going to be? It's going to be year? at Martin Park in downtown Sturgeon Bay mm -hmm. on the last Saturday in April. Well, that's terrific, and we'll look forward to seeing uh, information about that in the future. Yeah. And are there any other important dates other than the last Saturday in April that people should remember for 2014? We are going to host a Lake Michigan Day this year. Uh, Lake Superior has hosted a similar event uh, for a number of years. Uh, we haven't picked a date yet, but it'll be in early July. Uh, very likely we'll be at UW Manitowoc. Uh, a campus right on the shores of Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing there is inviting the public to engage with decision makers, our state representatives, to talk about some of the issues facing Lake Michigan. Uh, we're looking at the Great Lakes Water Compact as one theme, but really looking mm -hmm. at water quality and water resources in general. Uh, in, so that would include uh, taking more water out of the ground as well as what you put on the ground. Correct. Okay. Well, Jim, I want to thank you very much for giving us your time today. Is there anything else you'd like to add for no, our viewers? No, my pleasure. Just uh, be aware that water is life. Thank you again. You have been watching Access Door County with your host, Victoria Serenich, and we have been speaking with Jim Kettler, the Executive Director of the Lakeshore Natural Resource Partnership. Access Door County is carried exclusively on Sevastopol TV, Channel 986. Thank you for watching.